Coming up on Saturday night in St. Louis, it is Shamrock 273, and we're now joined by one of the men that's going to be in the main event of the fight card, as he is going to be taking on Jeff Crotty. It's Kurt Huff, who is 3-0 in his career, going to be his first fight since 2014. Uh, before we even get to the fact that this is your first fight in, in two years, my understanding is that this is a winner-take-all fight? Uh, that's correct, yeah. So how how did this come about that uh you know it's a winner take all fight? Uh, we we were discussing uh the bout in a, a group message with the matchmaker and everything and he threw it up there, Hey, do you wanna do double or nothing? And I said, Sure. Has that ever happened to you at, at all in, in your pro career? <laughs> no. Uh I've never heard of it happening either, so it's pretty kind of the first. It was, did it catch you off guard a little bit? They're like, man, this guy must be really confident. Yeah, I didn't answer right away. I saw it, and I was like, I didn't even get what he was talking about. I was like, oh, you know, all the show money, all the purse money. So, I mean, it, it's uh, it's a little extra motivation to get in there and maybe get a, a few extra dollars on top of it. I mean, I was going to kind of ask that. I mean, you know, every every fighter has, has different motivation, but you know, simply for this camp is the fact of, hey, I can, I can more than double what I'm going to make here. You know, I really haven't even thought about it. Like at the end of the day, it, uh, it's not really about making tons of money or anything. It's uh, it's just get in there and competing the best of your ability. I mean, uh, it's always been on the back burner, and it really hasn't come up to me since like doing some of these interviews and that's always the first thing they ask about. I'm like, Oh yeah, it is like that. But <laughs> it's not like, uh, it's burning into my mind or anything. Mm. And as I mentioned, you know, three and oh, first fight since July 18th, 2014, you know, so, you know, just so over two years, uh, you know, between fights, nearly two years to the date between fights for you. What, what has been going on with you over the last two years? Well, I opened my own. I I live in a, a smaller town. I was training far away. I opened up uh, my own jujitsu school down here, and I and it, it took a while to get going. I was always dedicating my time there. And now, now I have a bunch of students, and I can get back and train with my my normal training partners at St. Charles in MMA. It, it just kind of took a while to get things going, and even before that, I had a knee injury probably a year ago and I let that heal. So it was a, it was a combination of things that I had to, I had to get things in all my ducks in a row to be able to compete again. I mean, you hear a lot of, you know, fighters who, who get into, uh, you know, the gym or, or, or the school business of, you know, a certain discipline uh, for you, uh, is it everything you expected or did you not realize how much work this was going to be? Um, it, it's not as like crazy work where it's grinding. It just, it occupies a lot of time. You got, you got to be there, you know? And then in the beginning, guys are just coming in and training. Now guys are fighting and they're competing and I got to be there for them. Like, uh, this weekend I had a few guys fight and I, I had to be there to corner them and help them. But yeah, just, just being there and, you know, helping other people, it does say, it does take up time, but I wouldn't say it's hard work. I enjoy doing it. What do you learn about the fight game being a cornerman as opposed to being the guy in the cage? Um, yeah, you realize that everyone deals with nerves. You know, like uh, when you first start fighting, you're nervous before fights. And you're like, oh, oh man. You didn't realize everyone's like that. The guy you're fighting is probably nervous. And uh, I I think that's been a pretty big takeaway i you know i cornered guys that i was training with and i've been doing it doing it a long time so i've seen all the aspects from being in there and uh, being in the corner I've seen it all you mentioned about you know the knee injury and you know opening your own school i mean how would you describe yourself right now as we're you know talking here just a couple of days before the fight you know is it just you're just excited to get back in there is that the way you would best describe it yeah, I'm I'm excited because uh, in reality, like uh, I was, you know, one of the top amateurs out of the area. Then I had, a, uh, you know, some pretty good success there in the beginning. And then now, you know, you step away for a little bit, doing other things, and other guys coming up, and you kind of feel forgotten about. Like you see other people get opportunities on big shows that roll through St. Louis, like Bellator, and you're like, hey, you know, 
where am I at? They, they must have forgot about me. So that's kind of how I felt about it. Do you almost kind of feel like this is a, a reintroduction uh, of yourself to the mixed martial arts community there in, in, the, in the Midwest? Um, I don't know. I, maybe, maybe it is, but I feel like I've always been around it because even though I haven't, you know, competed in MMA, I've been competing in pro boxing and kickboxing and professional and jiu-jitsu events. It's not like I've sat around on my couch, you know, <laughs> I've still pretty much trained every day from the beginning when I started doing this. I still, I've trained throughout every day pretty much since I started this. So it, it, I'm still around guys. I'm still around it all a lot. It's not like I've went back in a cave and not been anywhere. So I've seen it. Are you a believer in cage rust? Um, I think, it, I think it depends on how, how you train and it, it could be a factor, but, uh, every, you know, that, that question has come up to me, but my opponent has fought one time in the last five years. Yeah. So whatever I'm dealing with, he's dealing with too. So it's a pretty, pretty even playing field in that. And I think, uh, the ring wrestling, I think it just depends on the person. I think it affects everyone a little different. It's hard to tell. Jeff had that fight there back at Bellator 145 at the end of last year, losing a decision. Uh, but overall, what do you what do you think of him as an opponent? Oh, I think I think he's tough and, and has a, a, a strong will to win, which is uh, is hard to deal with. It's hard to uh, beat a guy that doesn't give up. And when he fought uh, Gary Grossner in Bellator, he definitely uh, I think he took it on short notice and, and came to fight. And I was actually. I actually used to work at a bar with Gary Gross, so I kind of knew him, and you know, but but just you know, put up a pretty good fight against him. So, what did you do in the uh, bar industry? Oh, uh, uh, I was a bouncer. I was for like the smallest bouncer around. Actually, a lot of guys that have fight around in St. Louis are bouncers. <laughs> You see now. Now, did anybody ever know you were a fighter? And did someone try to pick a fight with you because they knew you were a fighter? Um, no, I don't, I don't think anybody ever tried to pick fights, just dealing with drunk people. But, uh, I mean, uh, there, there was bigger guys that kind of like, Hey, I'm not leaving. <laughs> How are you going to kick me out? But <laughs> I mean, there's always somebody there with me. I'm like, all right, let's grab this guy. As someone who, who worked in, uh, the, uh, marketing side of, of nightclubs and bars for over a decade, uh, I know what you mean about, uh, you know, trying to get people out of the bar when they're, uh, well, it's definitely time for uh, them, them to call it a, a night, but uh, yeah, it's it's. There's a lot of, I, I guess, there's a lot of interesting untold stories that can be talked about of the various things we have seen over the years. Oh yeah, you never know what's going to happen in in bars late at night and people have been drinking. <laughs> You know, and I, I mean, every time you step into the cage, you, you never know what's going to happen. You can, you know, visualize the fight going so many ways. But is there a certain way you see this fight going? Um, you know, just like how you said, every fight is so different. There's been fights where I think I'm going to handle someone. They put up a fight. There's been guys where I'm like, man, I don't think I'm going to do great and I handle him. It's it's so unpredictable. And, uh, you know, this could turn into a straight brawl. It could turn into a grappling match. But I think with a reasonable certainty, I think we both favor grappling. So I'm surprised at some point in time we'll, we'll end up doing a little grappling. But, uh, who knows? You know, it's not like people ask me my game plan. It's like I have an idea of what he likes to do, and he probably has the same to me. But I really don't try to count on anything happening. I just go with it. And uh, I've always been that way. I never, like, stare video and try to break down everything they're doing because mm -hmm. it's very, very unpredictable. It's like they say, one one punch could change that. That game plan can go completely out of the window just based on, on one second there. And uh, But, of course, this fight's going to be coming down, uh, coming up here on July 23rd, Shamrock FC 273. Details of the event available, shamrockfightingchampionships.com. Kurt, really appreciate time. Anywhere my listeners can follow you out on social media? Uh, the Facebook page is Kirk Hoff, and on Twitter, I'm Kirk Hoff 88 and I'd appreciate any support. Appreciate it for your time. Good luck in the fight, man. All right. Thank you.